Hey everybody, this is Steve. And I'm Father Tony Vrain. And I'm Father Alex Gusetis. And we're here to offer four simple tips for a very unexpected Holy Week. We've spent the last few weeks developing a bunch of new online resources for ministry. Videos, live streams, and podcasts, which have all been great and really helped people take this very unusual Lenten journey. And now we're here at the end of Great Lent, preparing for the home stretch, Holy Week and the Lord's crucifixion and resurrection. Like Steve covered in the latest episode of Be The Bee, this will be a different experience because we're all staying home out of love for our neighbors. The good news is that social distancing doesn't need to affect the way we experience these holy days. Don't forget, the news of the resurrection was shared with only a few people at the beginning. 500 people didn't go to the tomb, just three women and Jesus appeared to his disciples when they were behind locked doors. The good news is that this can still be the most joyous Pascha we've ever celebrated. So to help guide you through Holy Week, we're offering four simple tips to help you make the most of the days ahead. First, attend as many services as you can. One of the best things about Holy Week is the sheer number of services the church offers. Beautiful services full of beautiful prayers, hymns, and readings that help open our hearts to communion with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's been no shortage of live-streamed services the past few weeks, and Holy Week will be no exception. So, because this week is primarily about prayer and worship, take advantage of as many of those services as you can. Make sure that the services and links are in your calendar. Make sure you treat this like any other services. Put on what you'd normally wear for church, stand attentively, close any other tabs that may be open in your browser, have your Holy Week service book ready to follow along. And perhaps most importantly, forgive yourself if there are some services you just can't make. In some ways, tuning into a live streamed service is way harder than physically being there. It's harder to be attentive and give God your full attention, but try to listen carefully to the words of the services. They are meant to draw us into the experience, to expand our understanding of what's happening. And listening can be that much harder if, for example, you have small children running around the house. So do your best and don't be too hard on yourself if this Holy Week doesn't go exactly as you hoped. Second, change your routine. The sheer number of services push us out of our comfort zone and encourage us to dedicate more of our time to the Lord. Instead of watching our favorite show or hanging out with friends, we're in church. Holy Week helps break us out of our normal routine, but when we spend as much time at home as many of us have, that can be harder than ever. So, break up your routine. That can start with making sure the services are on your calendar and part of your daily practice. You can also make a little extra time for daily prayer. Make some extra time to read, to nourish your heart with something beautiful. Ask yourself a question that a Jewish family asks at Passover. After all, Pascha is our Passover. Why is this night different from all other nights? To make things even simpler, you can take some time to notice the needs of the people around you. Volunteer to do the dishes, for example, rather than waiting for someone else to do them. Keep your room a bit more tidy than you usually do so you're prepared, both on the outside and on the inside, to welcome the Lord. Shake things up in a good way so you can refocus on what matters most. Third, connect with your friends and family. Speaking of what matters most, Holy Week can be a great time to connect with family and friends. Even if you live with others, your personal schedules might take you in different directions. And if you don't live with family or friends, connecting with them may be that much more difficult since we're all practicing social and physical distancing. But now's the time to text someone you haven't connected with in a while. Or better yet, FaceTime or video chat a loved one. It's also an opportunity to connect with someone you don't know well. You could send some cards to a nursing home. Or better yet, contact your parish priest to see if someone is in need of a phone call or some other help. Share the love of God through simple gestures of kindness 
and connection. And since we've been talking about schedules and routines, make time to spend dinner with your family. Unfortunately, we can't share meals in person at the moment, but we can still share a meal over video chat at least once a day with family and friends. Meals are a great opportunity to pray together, to open up and share all that we're experiencing during these days. If you want some reflection questions to use to guide your time together, check out the daily fun-tivities that are posted on y2am.org slash Holy Week, or feel free to read scripture together and use the reflection questions found at y2am.org slash small groups. And fourth, make this the most joyous Pascha ever. If anything, all the difficulties we've been facing the past few weeks have been an opportunity for great repentance. Like we covered in the latest Be the Bee, it's been an opportunity to more deeply realize just how much we need God and the church. That need is captured most perfectly in the cross and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He died with us so we can rise with him. Hearing about people losing their jobs and suffering in hospitals, not being able to attend church services in person, all of these things hurt in their own way. All of them are invitations into the way of the cross. We might be feeling the weight of the cross a little more intensely, but we should also make sure to feel the lightness of the resurrection a little more intensely too. When you tune into the Pascha service and you hear the joyous words of victory, shout them out. Open your window and shout, Christ is risen from the dead. Sing the resurrection hymn at the top of your lungs. Take a video of it and share it with the world. Proclaim the good news of Christ's resurrection more intensely than you ever have before. And then, even if you're by yourself, break the fast and celebrate the feast with something delicious. Celebrate with your favorite food. Share the joy of that meal with others, even if it's over a video call. Take a moment to reflect on what you're grateful for and then share that joy as you share your Paschal meal. This has been a difficult Lent. Don't let that difficulty overshadow the joy of the resurrection. Make it an opportunity to experience that joy more intensely than ever before, and share that joy more intentionally than you ever have before. That's it. Four simple tips to help you make the most of this very unique Holy Week experience. Four simple tips to help keep your eyes on Christ during this difficult time period so that you can more fully experience the resurrection. On behalf of the team, all the talented people from across the church that have been working together to serve you during these past few weeks. We wish you all a very blessed Holy Week and a joyous resurrection. May God fill your hearts and your homes with his presence, not just during Holy Week, but always. For more from us at the Department of Religious Education, check out our website at goarch.org slash departments slash Religious Ed. To find out more about the Center for Family Care, please check our website, family.goarch.org, or find us on Facebook, Center for Family Care. Thanks for watching, and may God bless you.